Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living in a retirement having. It's sort of interesting how we put our lives together in a way that makes sense, isn't it? After all, it's our individual life that we are fighting for most of the time. Our individual opportunity to earn an income, our individual opportunity to make clients and serve our customers, and openly to find new consumers to produce our living. When we are working in any industry, there are standard operating procedures. Those things are usually called benchmarks when they're the best practices of an industry. It sort of becomes a commonality across the entire platform of that community, meaning if you're in the restaurant industry, there are certain standards, there are certain laws, there are certain applications, there are certain processes, there are certain, well, areas that get applause. At the same time, there are no-nos in the industry that most people put into their training programs of training a new employee, presuming, of course, that the manager on duty is not too lazy to truly train someone today. You see, some people are kinesthetic learners, some people are audio learners, some people are visual learners. A kinesthetic learner has to do something in order to acquire it into their understanding. A visual learner has to see something in audio, and an audio learner has to hear it, but a lot of people are a mix of all. When we talk about these things in an intellectual way, we realize that God is working every single day. The real question that we have in life is, is God working in your life today? If God is working in your life today, then you are probably a really good pastor of your life today. Now, what does it mean to be a pastor of your life today? Does it actually mean that you're in charge of your life? Does it actually mean that you're looking at your life and planning your life? Does it actually mean that you're living a happy and content life, a purposeful life is what they used to talk about, or a mission-oriented life, or a life with vision? In this world, we have to decide what is our end game, what is our end goal, what is the thing that we want to do most in the world, and how are we using our time in order to get to that practicality. You see, I worked many, 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 many years before I had a vacation. The first alleged vacation that I had throughout my entire adult life was when I was an interpreter and an automotive client, and I actually got to take an extra week on a trip that I was sent on to Japan. It allowed me to catch up with my family overseas. It allowed me to do a few things that I wanted to do, and I wanted to be pleased. But openly, that was the first vacation I had in a while. When you start your own business, when you start your own practice, you have to really schedule your time well. If you don't schedule your time well, you end up having your business run you, as we say, instead of you running your business. Any business that makes it past the five-year mark is a viable quality business. I ran my language school for 15 years. I had clients, generally speaking, between four to seven years each. That meant we knew how to get and keep and maintain clients on an annual agreement, which meant that every month, month after month, we were not buying for new customers. We were not expecting someone to walk in the door as if it was a retail star, and basically we could continue our living, continue our time management, and continue enjoying our family time. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth about life. Most people want to launch a business, but they're unwilling to do the hard work of checking to see whether or not the business is viable. Sometimes the easiest way to start a business today is to get yourself into a network marketing business where they give you all the practical tools, all the marketing tools, all the training and all the guidance and all the teamwork in order to become same thing. You see, it's the late and the great Dr. John Maxwell, who's not late, sorry, but he is great, who says it takes uh, teamwork to make the dream work. That is true in any organization. There is no real difference between a corporation and a network marketing organization, except practically the quality of training is usually a lot better. I'm only talking about this because too many people in the world who are stupid about life don't understand how money is actually made and earned in the world. They don't understand Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow quadrants and how wealth is usually developed in people's lives. I encourage that you each read the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which is a fundamental book for anyone who's practically thinking about doing something with their money or wanting to learn how to earn money. It's a marvelous $10 read. The follow-up book is called Cash Flow Quadrants, and it, too, is a marvelous read. If you really want to sp spend some coin, you can get his Cash Flow Game, which allows you to practice your understanding of how to develop and build wealth, but it also allows you to teach your children how to do the same. 
in life we have most of the time to promote good people and I've read some really good books in my life and I've definitely had some chances to interview some really good authors before my whole world started to fall apart. I was on a different stint in life, I was in a different direction in life and I really enjoy interviewing people. I interviewed a good five, seven, ten, I don't remember now, how many people in my local and my national business community. Bob Berg was a very gracious guest, and so was his writing partner, David John Mann. John David Mann, sorry about that, buddy. And openly, I'm a little tired, so forgive me for that. I also had the marvelous opportunity to read and to um, network with and to socialize with and to interview an incredible lady out of Canada who has a lot of gifts of spirit, and I was so pleased to do that. You see, in the world today, we've forgotten who God is today. We have totally lost our ability to understand the Holy Ghost. And people tout their Christian, they tout their Muslim, they tout their Methodist, they tout their Catholic, but they don't talk about God in an important way. You see, those quiet, subtle voices that love on you that say, hey, help him today, are usually the Holy Ghost saying, you have it within your means to do something. Why don't you do something to help? But usually what happens after that, and I've seen this a hundred to a thousand times, is some human being will get involved will sort of reflect and will think about what we're trying to do and will invite someone else to get, render an opinion and then pretty soon that person will poo-poo everything you wanted to do. The best thing that you can do in life when you're thinking about doing something for someone, especially if it's a modest ten, twenty dollars, is to simply ask God, what can I do? Then ask the individual because they have to give you permission to do something. I do get a little tired of grown men who are usually much taller than me, who like to walk up while I'm at a cash register about to pay for my food and try to insist that they're going to commandeer my transaction and buy my food. Not only did they not ask my permission to do that, they're expecting the child behind the counter who's doing the retail work to make the decision for me about them allowing them to do that. How rude. It is really important that when you're trying to help someone, you ask them how they'd like to be helped. While it is a loving and kind thing to offer to pay for someone's meal, it might be just easier for you to slip them $20 so that they have money for the next time, instead of embarrassing them at a register. Sometimes it's very generous and kind. Sometimes it allows them to eat more food than they had planned, and openly you have to ask permission. So the best way to do that is say, excuse me, please. I've noticed that you might possibly in struggle based on just a few things. And I wonder if you might allow me to, to honor you in this moment of time to provide for you your meal or to pay for it for you with no strings attached to me. Now think about the graciousness and the hospitality and the Jesus Christ of that.